All right, I want to defend Cam Newton. Uh, it feels... I, I do not like Cam Newton. I'm not a fan of Cam Newton. It feels weird to even use the word defend and Cam Newton in the same sentence. I, I just... I'm not a Cam Newton guy. I don't like him. I, I don't... I don't like him, and I don't think he's that great. I think he's often very overrated. We saw this weekend the the Panthers lost to the Falcons. Falcons lost to the what am I saying? The Panthers lost to the Saints, twenty six to thirty one uh, last weekend in the NFC Wild Card round. And you know, I've always been very, very critical of Cam, but Cam Newton did something that I, as a competitor, as a former quarterback, I just. I cannot respect Cam Newton enough for what he did this weekend. Uh, let's be very clear. We're going to talk about now Cam Newton's concussion symptoms and the way the Panthers violated the concussion protocol. Um, but I want to be very clear. Head injuries, concussions, it's a very serious problem. I do not want to glorify... Uh, the. Uh, I don't want to glorify avoiding concussion symptoms at all. That's not my intent. Uh, but it does happen. That's the reality of football. It happens all the time. I got hit once in the head really hard in football, and I, and I knew something was going on, and I said, I want to I play. This is a big, important game to me. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose my spot. And I, I didn't come out of the game. I didn't tell anybody what was going on. In hindsight, that's really stupid. You should talk to someone. If you're, if you're feeling like something's wrong with your head, you should get help. But the truth is, it happens all the time. And I, we cannot fault anyone for leaving a game early. You know, if, you're, if your head's messed up, get out of the football game. But what Cam did is Cam came back in, and that is incredibly gutsy. If you gave me a list of people in the beginning of the season, this guy is having head problems, and he's going to stay in the game. Cam Newton is maybe the last person I would pick to do that. We saw, remember, a couple years ago in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl, the last game of the season... Cam Newton fumbles the ball, the ball's on the ground, and he didn't even he didn't even try to get the ball back. And when he asked afterwards about that, Cam Newton said, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want to dive into the pile. Dude, it's a Super Bowl. You're, what do you mean you don't want to get hurt? If you're gonna get hurt, this doesn't matter. This is the last game of the year. This is the only time it's okay to leave a game injured because if you can't walk, you're playing until you can't walk. It's a Super Bowl. So I, I figured Cam Newton was kind of a flake. I've always felt that way. I don't like him very much. Um but Cam Newton came back in the game, and he looked, the guy had, he had some kind of problems. I mean, the guy looked out of it. But Cam Newton had a gutsy performance. He came back in the game. He played really well. Cam Newton played really well against the Saints this weekend. And I just wanted to, you know, everyone's criticizing the Panthers for the way they handled the situation. We'll get to that in a minute. But I want to tip my cap to Cam Newton as a competitor, as a former quarterback. To have the guts to come back in at a moment like that. That's incredible. That's I I, uh, I don't want to glorify that at all. It's not smart if you're having head injuries. Don't come back into the game. But what Cam Newton did was really gutsy, and um, I just I I, ha- I have to say it's I, I I'm not a Cam Newton fan. I often criticize him. That was impressive, and that was um, the opposite of what a flake would do. Um, so again, I I just I I, I don't know how to how to say this in a political correct way, but I was really impressed with Cam Newton this weekend. I thought he did a great job, and I think. You know, we're we're giving we're being a little hard on the Panthers because again, it happens. If your best player gets injured, he's going to do everything he can to continue to play, especially a quarterback. Now, I have a solution to the way that the NFL handles their concussion protocol because the Panthers obviously and egregiously violated the NFL's concussion protocols. And the way the concussion protocol works now is if you if you do not follow them, if you violate them. The, the franchise gets a, the franchise of the player, I'm not sure, I think it's a franchise, gets a $100,000 fine. That's a joke. That's a, it's less than a slap on the wrist. If you're, you know, if you're in trouble for something, if you drunk drive and they just slap you on the wrist, it's just not going to do anything. You don't care. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I can go home. I can continue to drive home. You need to have consequences for uh, people that do not follow safety protocols. So what I think should happen is the NFL needs to make this a steep Steep fine, like a three million dollar fine. If you're gonna have a player not go through concussion protocols, you gotta pay the price. It's got to be a big deal, and it's got to be a very tough decision. Um, you know, again, I, I did this once. I think that if, if you're gonna have a guy come back in the game, you gotta deal with the problems. Because the truth is, there's no, there is really no safe way to play football. Let's be very honest. It's a dangerous sport. It, it's a lot of collision. You're hit. Have a lot of head-to-head, head-to-head contact. It's it's just not. There's not a safe way to play football. But if you're going to violate the, the concussion protocols, if you're not going to follow the rules, A, you got to know the consequences. You got to know what you're getting into. When I went back into the football game in high school, 
I knew what I was getting into, but I knew I, this was a moment that meant so much to me. I'm not coming out right now. Not at all. And you got to know the consequences if you're Cam Newton and you got to know the consequences if you are the franchise where well, you're going to pay a steep, steep fine. You know, if, if a average wide receiver gets injured, you're going to follow concussion protocol because you got to you're like, we can't we're not going to pay three million dollars for Ted Ginn Jr. Like for this average wide receiver. But again, if your best player gets injured, if Brian Urlacher or Ray Lewis or Cam Newton gets injured and they're they are determined to continue to play the game and they're begging, they're saying, you know. I, it's a tough thing, I think, if you're going to violate because we've seen the Seahawks now violate it. We've seen the Panthers violate it. Right, wrong, or indifferent, people are going to violate concussion protocol, make the penalty incredibly steep to make it so teams aren't quite as incentivized to continue to play their players when they're showing concussion symptoms. It's got to be a very, if you're going to break concussion protocol, it's got to be a very, very steep, very harsh penalty. All right, I want to move on. I want to get away from the, con- I, I'm scared, you know, it's, it scares me to talk about concussion protocol because it's a it's a touchy subject. I don't want to offend anyone, but the reality is football's dangerous. And people do that all the people break concussion protocol all the time. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. In fact, if you are showing concussion symptoms, do not stay in the football game. It's bad for your brain. It's it's really dangerous. But it happens. And it, it, we got to instead of looking at it with an, an ideal view, the reality is it happens. How do we change the system so that it discourages it? And how do we deal with it the best way possible? So I'm terrified to talk about concussions, but that is the honest truth. That is probably the best way to deal with the situation. Make the penalty incredibly, incredibly steep.